In this final leg of the fall 2021 road trip, we're going to be hugging the mid-Atlantic coast of the United States, all the way from Long Island to the Outer Banks. And we've never been to this area before, so it's all going to be new. Enjoy the ride! I'm free in my RV We only spent one night here and uh, one night was probably enough Yesterday we went by New Haven briefly I mean, we've never been to this area and I wanted to do something significant in Connecticut So we came to Worcester Square also known as New Haven's Little Italy to have some pizza at this famous place called Frank Pepe Pizzeria Napolitana at the recommendation of our friend Steve. But parking seemed problematic and there was a line stretching outside the door and I don't care how good the pizza is, I'm not gonna make a line. Also, after spending several weeks in Vermont and New Hampshire, being back in a big congested city, it can be intimidating and overwhelming. So we went to the Mohegan Sun Casino where they also have a Frank Pepe and... Uh, Actually, I don't want to talk about it. I didn't take video of the incident, so what happens at the casino? It's better if it stays at the casino. We also went by New London, which is where we're taking the ferry to Long Island, New York. We wanted to make sure we knew where the ferry terminal was and to see the town. I had read about it somewhere. Steinbeck, perhaps? I don't remember, but it seems to be a charming town nowadays. Here's the Soldiers and Sailors Monument, and I think I see a ferry leaving the dock. Yeah, this is where we take the ferry. Back to today, let's stop it off. I don't know where the next gas station is going to be. Somewhere in New York, I presume. Well, at 3.53 per gallon for credit card. This has to be by far the most expensive gas in the whole trip. We have about an hour to kill, so let's stop here. Maybe we can get something to eat, but everything seems to be closed for the season. Here's Niantic Bay, by the way. And something that surprised me a lot about New England is how seasonal it is. A lot of places are already closed for the season. I guess we'll have breakfast on the ferry. Hmm, déjà vu or perhaps a glitch in the matrix? Let me tell you something. Even though we've enjoyed our time in New England tremendously, I think it is time to go someplace else. I mean, we loved the nature, the food was amazing, and so were all the great people we met. But now, the South is calling. And this trip we're about to take, in some ways, bucket list. We're going to take several ferries, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, the Jersey Shore, the Outer Banks. Oh, it's going to be such a great adventure. Here we go, all aboard. Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free in my RV Riding, riding This episode is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and its main function is to create a private secure connection between your devices and the internet. And uh, it's very simple, it's either software on your computer or an app on your mobile device. And um, what it does, you know, you just click connect. And in a few seconds, you're going to have a private secure connection to the internet. And that is very important, especially if you're connecting to a public Wi-Fi, like a coffee shop or a hotel, campground. I mean, you don't know. You don't know. Someone could be eavesdropping on that connection and potentially stealing your passwords, your identity, all, all sorts of things. So, you know, even at home, it is good practice to go through a VPN just in case. But um, it's got other features. My favorite is that you can change your location virtually. 
For example, let's say I want to watch a TV show that is only available in Australia. Just click on Australia, Sydney there. There's a menu with all the countries and within seconds you are, as far as the internet is concerned, you are teleported to that location. I mean, it's taking a little longer because we're going halfway across the world, right? There, we are in Sydney, Australia. And it has other features. For example, there's this a true incognito search right here that you could make a, a, a private search for your eyes only. It's got, a, it's got a clean web feature that gets rid of unwanted ads and potential, you know, spyware and stuff like that. Now I've got a special offer for you, viewers of my channel. You go to surfshark.deals slash myrv and you put promo code myrv at checkout and you'll get 83% off and three months for free. There it is, across the famous river, the Fort Griswold Monument, dedicated to those who fell during the Battle of Groton Heights on September 6, 1781. And by the way, shouldn't it be called the New Thames River since we are in New London? Just saying. There's once again the monument, also called Groton Monument, since that is the name of the town on that side of the river. Here's Fort Trumbull, nowadays a state park and a museum. That would be the new London Harbour Lighthouse, dating back to the 18th century. Wow, would you take a look at those mansions? Isn't that something? There's once again the lighthouse, as we approach the open waters of the Long Island Sound. And that would be the new London Ledge Lighthouse. And on the other side, Every Point Lighthouse. Looking to the west, if you squint hard enough, you might be able to see the New York City skyline over the horizon. Nah, not really, if only the Earth was flat, right? But don't despair! We'll see New York soon enough, and lots of it. That's Plum Island Lighthouse. We're getting close. Orient Point Light, perhaps? Here we are in the Empire State, New York. Now what to do? What to do? I wanted to go to Sag Harbor, but first we're towing, so we're not so maneuverable. And I had not realized how fragmented this eastern part of Long Island is. So we would need to either take two ferries or drive around. Uh, and either way, it's a 90 minute detour. Even though it is early, at some point we want to make it to our destination before sundown and we're actually staying at a harvest house tonight. We're not really supposed to park here, please don't tell anybody, but we really need to take a break and regroup and figure out what we're gonna do. Here's looking south, towards the area I kind of want to visit, but it will not happen today. 
Obviously, more research should have gone into this. This is, by the way, called Truman's Beach. Hmm, 11.6. You think we'll make it? Lots of wineries in this area, by the way. And the lighthouse. Horton Point Lighthouse. It's supposed to have views of the sound and even a museum. Okay, I got myself into a dead end. Again. And all this to see a lighthouse that is closed right now and one which you can't even see from the road. Okay, let's not do that again. Long Island... Not exactly what I expected, I mean, I didn't know what to expect, but I was hoping to be able to stop at different places, maybe more ocean views. And maybe it is us, but the farther west you go, the least RV friendly it seems. And the weather certainly does not want to cooperate. Also, I guess there's a reason why they called it Long Island. It is long. It is a long drive. We're gonna get off the main highway here for a little bit, see the town, how people live. After all, the idea was to explore Long Island, but I don't know why I thought this was a good idea. This is even more stressful than the expressway, I think, so let's get back on it and continue on the journey west. Complicated parts of the country to navigate, like this area, are probably best to explore with a camper van and wait till we get to the parkway which tow vehicles are not allowed and vertical clearance is unclear. Luckily, we're almost there, but it has not been an easy drive. Here we are arriving at Oceanside, New York, and our harvest host is a brewery and let me tell you, after this stressful drive, I'm so ready for an IPA. The brewery is located in this industrial area, so let me find out where to park. Alright, we're going to park across the street temporarily while they finish dismantling those tents, and then we're gonna park right next to that other rig, in front of the brewery. Actually, very nice brewery. Everybody's super friendly. The bartender was into hiking, actually. We ordered some Italian from a local restaurant and called it a night. It's a brand new day and let's fill up the tank because things are about to get really complicated here. Today we're going to do something, something we've actually done before, just not towing a travel trailer, which in this case greatly complicates things. We're going to be doing something no prudent, level-headed RVer in their right mind would ever do. Today we're going to be driving in Brooklyn, New York, not necessarily by choice. There is a parkway, a very nice highway actually. But the rules about vertical clearance and RVs are very unclear, so we're going to take the truck route just to be on the safe side. Safe being a very loose term here, considering what we're about to do. Yeah, things would be so much easier on the parkway, which we could probably get away with if we had a camper van. 
Of course, we would miss this experience. Hey, check it out! The World Trade Center! You can see it all the way from here. With each block that we pass, it's starting to look more and more like the city that never sleeps. Let me tell you, that's a very nice condo right there. It is like an obstacle course, but oddly enough, I find myself, in a weird way, enjoying the experience. There, we can already see the gigantic towers of the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Our cross-city adventure is almost over. We've driven across this bridge once before actually, and as I recall, the views of Manhattan are supposed to be spectacular, even though you kind of have to look back a little bit. Luckily, I have Illy to operate the camera. Now, isn't this view worth the white knuckle drive? I think it was. drive through Staten Island much more relaxed. And now we're about to enter the Garden State. Our first point of interest in New Jersey is going to be Sandy Hook, which is this barrier spit at the north end of the Jersey Shore, and home to the only clothing optional beach in the state. 
Of course, the reason we're here is for the spectacular views of the New York skyline afforded by this site, strategically located at the southern entrance to Lower New York Bay. Wait, wait till you see it! It is the off-season, so entrance is free. Let's park right here and have a quick lunch. Alright, right here on the side of the road, made a sausage sandwich with a parmesan, onions on a brioche and, uh, and we have a view. Well, came to Sandy Hook here, which is by the way free, even it doesn't matter if you have the America the Beautiful or not, it's, it is free in the off season and then in the on season, it's like 20 bucks per car, I have no idea. But the reason I came here, by the way, you're, is you're not supposed to swim on the beach in the off season because there's no lifeguard. But the reason we came here is mainly for the beautiful view of Manhattan that you get from this beach. And we may go all the way to the end, but but for now I'm just gonna take the picture from here. It's a beautiful day too, perfect weather here in. Uh, yeah, we're now in New Jersey. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. Let's do a long pan here from left to right, starting with downtown, Lower Manhattan. And of course, there's the World Trade Center, such an iconic skyline. Even from this somewhat unusual vantage point. As we get to Midtown, of course, the Empire State Building. Yep, these are the two most iconic parts. Now, let's drive all the way to the end. Is that a Nike missile I see? And here we are at North Beach, and there's an observation deck. Yeah, this is what I wanted to know. Where's the Statue of Liberty? Let's look for it. So it's to the right of the Verrazano, to the left of. There. Amazing how much clearer it looks from up here. Once again, the Empire State Building and all those newer skinny skyscrapers and even Coney Island can be seen right there on the foreground. Here's the Fort Hancock 9-gun battery and you have no idea how long I've been wanting to come to this place and see those views of New York. I've studied the maps and seen online pictures and now we finally made it here. I'm not gonna put it in the bucket list category, but almost. Almost! This here is called Officers Row at Fort Hancock, which are these 18 homes where married officers used to live. There's the Sandy Hook Lighthouse, the oldest working lighthouse in the United States, dating back to 1764. Some of the houses have seen better days, some are beautifully restored. Now let's continue towards the rest of the Jersey Shore, which of course, it is over 120 miles, so we're not gonna be able to see everything in one day. This is Seabright, with all these luxury homes on the right and the tall seawall on the left. We won't be able to park anywhere, but at least we can see it from the car. This seems to be downtown Seabright. Very nice. Now we're on to Monmouth, very similar. Actually, it seems more developed, with this fancy club here on the left and some condominiums coming up ahead. Ooh, 
some huge houses around here. I wanted to hug the coast as much as possible, but sometimes we're forced inland by obstacles like this. I believe this is Deal Lake. And eventually, we're gonna have to go inland for real, otherwise we'll never make it. So suffice to say, we're not going to be able to see everything. And we're definitely skipping Atlantic City since we've been there before. We're gonna hug the coast here one more time by the borough of Bayhead. Then we have one more point of interest we want to see and after that we're heading inland for real. It's another typical beach town with narrow streets and oceanfront property. Let me tell you, these are beautiful mansions here by the beach, but after a while, it's all the same. And I don't want to bore you with all this opulence, so we're going to skip to one point of interest, which is, by the way, not particularly interesting to me, but it may be for some of you. This is Seaside Heights, and here on the left, the house from the reality TV show Jersey Shore. I haven't watched a single episode of the series, but if you have, well, here's the house. It seems to be a fun town with all kinds of attractions. The boardwalk, I mean, all these things very emblematic of an Atlantic coast beach town. And that's it, going inland. Gotta put some miles behind us. There's one point of interest we're going to miss, actually. Well, several. But the main one, Lucy the Elephant in Margate City, just past Atlantic City. But as I say, we'll return. I just want to get an overview of the area of the East Coast, see what it is like, see what I like. Our destination today is Cape May. We've been hearing about that town for years. By the way, that would be Ocean City, New Jersey in the distance, which was kind of part of the original plan, but it is getting late. We're gonna be staying at Seashore Campsites and RV Resort, which has since been rebranded as Sun Retreats Cape May. There are a handful of options in the Wildwoods, Cape May area, and this seemed like the best choice. Let's go into town. Let's get something to eat. Here we are, Beach Avenue in the historic district. And one of the things Cape May is most famous for is its Victorian architecture. It is actually considered a national historical landmark. We've made it to Cape May. We're going to eat at Cape May Fish Market. We have yet another New England clam chowder. And our last lobster roll of the trip. Not bad, pretty abundant. Mm, had to finish with the soft tea, right? From, what's the name of this place? Core Bros. Well, it is dark here on the, on the streets of Cape May. But I want to tell you something. That, uh, that clam chowder was probably the best we've had in the whole New England, even though this is not New England, technically. But the lobster roll mm, was all right. Not the worst, not the best. But overall, it was a good experience. Uh, now we're gonna go back to the RV and, and rest.
I still find it very unsettling that someone has to put, you know, pump your gas here in states like New Jersey and Oregon. It seems wasteful as of, you know, people and and time. You know, I, I could have done a more a quick, much quicker and more efficient job. But hey, that's the way they like it. Here. Let's check out Wildwood, which is the next town over, and while Cape May has that Victorian charm, Wildwood has a boardwalk with the biggest beachfront amusement parks and some pretty cool 1950s architecture. these signs and these hotels, they do have a little bit of a Route 66 feel to them, don't they? At this point, we're just kind of driving around aimlessly, realizing how quiet it is. It almost feels like a ghost town. That may be why we get that Route 66 vibe more than old Miami Beach or old Vegas, perhaps. And what happens is this town pretty much shuts down completely for the off season from November through May. Our timing, <laughs> impeccable as ever. Actually, it is kind of interesting to see it this way. There are three of these amusement piers, this one being the largest. The Giant Wheel is one of the largest on the East Coast. Another pier here on the other side, this one has the Great White Roller Coaster. Well, as you can see, Wildwood here, pretty much a ghost town, as you can see. That's as the off season begins, although today is one of those days, you know, it's beautiful days in the 70s. But yeah, this town is pretty much shut down now. <laughs> which, is, uh, which is funny how seasonal it really is. We're gonna continue exploring a little bit, but it feels almost like a post-apocalyptic thing with everything closed. It almost feels like like they forget to turn off the lights, you know? They all left and and everything is Just imagine this with people. That would be the other third amusement pier. Oh, check it out. It's one of those places, isn't it? I think we owe it to ourselves to return one of these days in the high season. Quick stop here at Burn Plaza. They have a Wildwood sign. Well, here's an, yet another Wildwood sign. Let's see if we can park somewhere so we can take a picture, you know, that iconic picture with the larger Wildwood sign. Right here, everything is deserted anyway. 
By the way, does anybody know why the sign says Wildwoods in plural? Hello, Pelican Heads. Today coming to you from Wildwood, New Jersey. And uh, it is totally the off season, so this is like a ghost town, but it's one of those places that has like all these 1950s neon signs and, and um, you know, a bunch of like cool looking hotels. We're gonna go back to Cape May. I mean, there's not a whole lot to do here today. There is a way to go directly from Wildwood to Cape May, but it is through this toll bridge, which has one peculiarity, and you'll see it in a few seconds. Yep, the toll booth is in the middle of the bridge, and of course, it is a drawbridge. It wouldn't be us if we didn't visit at least one of the local breweries. Cold Spring Brewery here is located in a historic barn dating back to 1804, just outside the historic Cold Spring Village. Well, this is a historic brewery here. We'll, we'll find out the history soon. As I said earlier, the building itself is a historic barn. The brewery, they have only been around since 2014, but the beer is really good. Cheers. And uh, yeah, that was good IPA. Now we're gonna go into town, have some dinner. But first, we're gonna go somewhere else. We're going to Sunset Beach, which is pretty much, well, almost the westernmost point in the peninsula, very close to where we're gonna take the ferry tomorrow. Here on the left, we have a World War II lookout tower, and we're almost there. I can already see Delaware Bay. Well, that would be the wreck of the USS Atlantis. Hey, check it out! Dolphins! USS Atlantis here, the most famous of the 12 concrete ships built by the Liberty Ship Building Company during World War I. These ships were built out of steel and reinforced concrete, which was cheaper to build but harder to operate. In 1926, the ship ran aground here, and they could never set it free. We're going to eat at a very special place tonight, but first, let's stop by the lighthouse. And some people will risk their lives to get that perfect shot. That lens looks expensive, wouldn't you say? There's the 1859 Cape May Lighthouse, but this area is also very famous for bird watching. Right here at the Cape May Wetlands State Natural Area. There are a bunch of trails, but we're just gonna look at the birds from here. Ooh, check out that plane! <laughs> Oh, 
I was just this far away from this camp. I had to keep it because I have friends that All right, let's go eat. The lobster house here comes highly recommended, so let's check it out. When the bread looks good, usually the rest of the meal is good too. That's Ilis. And this is mine. Well, that was probably the best meal of the whole trip, so thank you, Rob, for recommending that. Um, the lobster house here in Cape May, which is a fitting end to our time here. And uh, tomorrow we're waking up at the crack of dawn, actually before dawn, because the only ferry that was available was the 7 a.m. ferry. So uh, tomorrow we're going to Delaware. So good night. On the next one, we're going to take a ferry, a bridge that becomes a tunnel, another ferry. We'll meet up with a longtime viewer and friend in Ocean City, Maryland. We'll see wild horses, the birthplace of the airplane, and so much more as we continue exploring the mid-Atlantic coast. But as I said, <laughs> more about that on the next episode. Until then, Thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Cause I'm free in my RV <laughs>